Hello, welcome to Five Minutes in the Shed. Um, so, uh, I was waiting for loads of little bits. It's Saturday, the post came, I've got loads of little bits. It means I can crack on with everything, right? Um, so I was getting everything ready to do the video. I know that in this shed, somewhere is a bottle of Loctite. Can I find it? Can I? No, I can't. Uh, so, I've nipped up Halfords. <laughs> I've got some more Loctite. Now we can start on the engine build. Let me take you over to the bench. Okay, so I've been doing little bits of sort of nitty shitty kind of uh, jobs on the engine because I've been waiting for various parts, right? But we've got parts now. So I think the I think what we need to do is get serious, right? And we need to put some big bangers on top of the engine, all right? Uh, barrels, as we call them in the UK. Uh, jugs, as they call them, uh, as our uh, colonial cousins in America call them. Jugs, nice pair of jugs on the engine. So, uh, what have we got? Right, so we've got. Let me just uh, let me let me tilt, let me tilt for a moment. Right. So here's the top of the uh, top of the engine. Here we need studs in for the barrels to sit on. Uh, then there's two dowels. One goes here. One goes here. Um, uh, and, and then the gasket, obviously. And then we could put the barrels on. But we do need to put the cam followers in. Not forget those. Uh, they need to go on uh, on the barrels before we put them on. Um, yeah, brilliant. Um, I did put screws in there and there, right? Uh, these are a bit of a pain on Triumph engines because they're a bit tricky to get to. However, uh, I did ask a question on a forum to get people's opinion on it. Someone told me once you didn't need them. Uh, the later bikes don't have them. 650s, 750s don't have them. But... Someone said to me, oh, I just live, Matt, uh, there's no need for those anyway. Uh, so I gauged a, a bit of opinion on uh, the old uh, 500, 350 site on Facebook, and some people say put them in, some people don't. I've put them in just because I had them there, and I thought, you know what, I may as well just put them in. So I've put them in. Um, could have left them out, not really an issue. So I need to put the studs in. For that, I needed Loctite, didn't have any Loctite, so I went to Halfords, got Loctite. So we've got Loctite. We've got the two dowels that go each side. We've also got, <clears throat> we've got a new set of studs there. Then we've got barrel nuts and barrel washers here. So we've got everything we need to put the barrels on. <laughs> I'm rather excited about it. Um, yeah, so, and uh, yeah, I did put those in there talking about internet forums i tell you what oh, i love these facebook forums especially for these engines because you get some really nice people some great people on those forums uh, and i guess a lot of people who watch this channel uh, are on those forums right and that's how they know about it right it's brilliant but i tell you what oh, you, you you do people like to ask a question or whatever and you try and share you know i'm quite passionate about doing this right and you know you share share the thing on that forum and say oh yeah i've done a video on making this together and stuff like that and then and then you get you, you get your post all deleted and you get threatened with being banned from the group because because videos are bad right you, it's, it's a group talking about these engines and i made a video about the engine but you're not allowed to tell, tell people not allowed to talk about youtube videos so oh yeah funny old place the internet honestly so, uh, so yeah, I'm not going to be posting videos on a Facebook group because uh, uh, this video of the 350 unit construction engine is nothing to do with a 350 unit construction Facebook group. I'm not allowed. Anyway, yeah, funny people, internet administrators. It's like they wanted to be a manager in a job and never actually reached management level and uh, all of a sudden they can boss people around. I don't know what it is. Strange people. Uh, I can't think of anything worse than being an internet moderator. So, uh, right, uh, yeah, so uh, we can put all this on. Now I've had a little bit of a run. Um, studs. Here they are. I need two nuts to lock it together uh, so I can drive them in. Don't need the new ones because I'll put marks on them. I'll grab a couple of the old nuts out of my box. We'll cue the music and get them all in.
Oh, it studs are in. So studs, two dowels in these corners, all on. Loctited in. Uh, so they're all, all on. Nice. Studs for me jugs. Uh, now, um, before I put the bowels on, there's a few things you got to do, right? Uh, number one, you got to put the cam followers in. All right, so cam followers are here in pairs. So they go in the bottom here. Holes on the outside. Doesn't, to be honest, doesn't really matter on this engine, uh, but it's, you know, it's good practice. So they go in there. Um, just checking which way they fit best. Just make sure. Mm -hmm. Bit of resistance on that one, that way. I have no idea why. Whereas that way. Super smooth. Okay. Um, they're nice, nice, all ready to go. So what I'm going to do is get a bit of lube on those. A bit of lube. Make sure the holes are on the outside. Uh, come on, come on, come on. All right. Assembly lubage. Right, so that one in there. Nice. Same for this one. Nice and luby. There we go. Holes on the outside. Holes on the outside. Like that. A bit of lube on, on the face there, and a bit of lube. Uh, Bit of lube on the cams too, really. I'll do I'll do the cams in a minute, right? So they go on on onto 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 there. Like that. Now these tend to fall out because the bottom's heavy. Even with sticky assembly lube on, they will fall out. All right, so put those in, and then get a little zip tie around the top. That. Make sure that all the way up. Put a zip tie around, a little pull with the pliers. Make sure the zip tie is tight. There we go. That and that zip tie will be enough to hold them in place now. Uh, some people use O rings, it's probably a special tool someone's designed for it. Uh, so they need to be held in like that. I'll do the other side in a minute. Um, we also need a uh, base gasket on. There's the base gasket. I need to very carefully paint that with a bit of well seal. The reason is the castings aren't absolutely perfect. Um, it's not a fresh machine surface or, on, or anything on those. So I'm going to put some well seal on that and then the gasket will go on there first, like that. Uh, gasket has to go the right way because there's two fatter holes for the dowels. Good job I tried it. Where is there? Yes, there is. No, there isn't. There is no fatter holes for the dowels. You know what? I'm just going to trim two holes very slightly. Otherwise, I'll rip the gasket. Right, so that's a job to do. Um, and uh, also while the barrels are out, I want to gap the piston rings. Uh, very good practice gapping the piston rings. So to do that, you need uh, feeler gauges, and then you need the one that says first, first. That says first. So piston ring. One of these says top on it. That says top because they're tapered rings, right? So you get the ring, and you put it in the barrel. 
right. both ends of the barrel. And then you get your, uh, it's got to be between 8 and 10 thou, right? So, 8 thou feeler gauge. Oh, look at that. 8 thou feeler gauge, straight in, absolutely bang on. Well, that's a, that's a sign, that is, of good machining. Which means Pat Seeger has done my barrels, bored them and honed them absolutely cock on at 8 thou, which is the lower limit. Fantastic. And the rings from Harris are very, very good and accurate. So I did all those the other day. That's where my feeler gauge is at. So I don't need to do that. Just wanted to show you. So gap uh, piston rings. Uh, next job is uh, put the pistons on. So got comrades. Need to put the pistons on there. Uh, Gudgeon pins in, uh, circlips in, things like that. Then get some. Uh, <clears throat> spring compressors around them, uh, piston ring compressors around them, uh, which I haven't got, so I've made some of those. Um, and then, once the pistons are on, and the gasket's on, and the followers are in, then we can slide the barrels on. So, uh, you have to do quite a lot before you put the barrels on, surprisingly. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I reckon um, uh, I need to put the uh, cam followers in and pistons on first I reckon that's what we'll do so uh, yeah cue the music Pistons are on, looking all super shiny. I tell you what, bloody circlips <laughs> a bit of a pain to get in the, the second circlip. Anyway, they're in now. Um, I wasn't sure, I had to really think about which way to put them in, but they've got a bigger valve on the inlet and a, a smaller valve on the exhaust. So there's only one way they can go really, uh, which is this way with the bigger one for the inlet at the back. Uh, but then you can read the part number from this angle, which feels counterintuitive it feels like it should be the other way around but it's not it's that way so uh right now i need to put the piston rings onto the pistons so uh first second and the oil control ring so the oil control rings go on the bottom they've got to go on first i don't think they have a top and a bottom i'll double check but i don't think they do i think it's just on No, just this plus 20, because that's the size of them. All right, so they go on the bottom. Uh, scraper ring and compression ring on the top. Uh, these are my homemade uh, uh, piston ring compressors, which are made out of a thin sheet of aluminium. So they go on there, wrap around nice and tight. You can either use them with a, a zip tie to zip tie them in place, and then the barrels slide them down. And release the rings as they go or you can use um, a jubilee clip so either way works fine uh, and then you wiggle 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 in the go job done right that sounds easy right uh, so i need to put the piston rings on ready to go i've nibbled out two slightly larger holes for my dowels it's a bit weird that they're not anyway uh, so i've done that uh, so I'm going to stick this on first, then the rings, my cam followers are in, I need to get a couple of little bits of wood ready for everything to sit on as I'm lowering it down, I 
think we're almost ready almost almost ready to put the barrels on right it's a bit of music Okay, so just wanted to bring you in for an extreme close-up of the pistons in the barrels. Look at those bad boys. Is that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen or what? Oh, yes. Right, um, I'm going to pull it back because I want to put it on the timing marks. There we go, there we go. Oh, that is lovely. Let me move the camera back again. Hang on a second. We're wobbling, we're wobbling, we're going mobile, right? Uh, extreme close up of a cup of tea there. Right, so let's just reset the camera. Fantastic. Uh, there we go. So, barrels are on the engine. Yes, indeed. Um, which way am I going? Which way am I going? Uh, I'm going this way. All right, so heavy old lump now. Seem to have added weight. There we go. Right. Uh, she can sit there for a bit. Right, now then. <laughs> They're so, so nice. So nice. Move that back up. Oh, rather than poking out the top. Go, go, look at me. I'm a high compression piston in a Tiger 90 engine. Yes. Yes, you are. Right. So. Uh, oh, man, what have we done today? We've done all sorts, right? We've gapped the rings. Uh, put the base gasket on, uh, cam followers in, uh, put the barrels on. Um, I've uh, I've nipped all the bolts up. I right, give them a bit of a bit of a little bit of a talk on on each one, uh, but it's a uh, you know a paper material gasket, so it will crush. Right, so I'm going to leave it for a little bit, let it crush, let it settle, and then I'll talk it again uh, a little bit later on before we put the head on. And start to find the gap uh, for the right seals for the push rod tubes all that kind of malarkey right so uh, time inside is all done all the pinions are on oil pumps on that's ready to go uh, ready for its cover um, gearbox and put the kickstart spring in uh, this side this side the uh, final drive sprocket is on uh, next thing is we want to put on this cover plate here. Right, that's going to go on there, like that. Uh, I've got a new seal for that. Uh, then, 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 uh, we have to put the uh, the clutch kind of center boss thing on. That's there with its new thrust washer. So that will go on. Well, let's, let's, do, let's do a dry build, right? A dry build that goes on there like that then this goes on here like that lovely uh, that goes on there like that we then need clutch basket all right now the clutch basket if you've been watching from the beginning is this one but these are like bloody rip saws these are they're terrible and the plates will not slide nicely on those so i'm calling this knackered Right, that's what I'm calling it. So that's going over there on the knackered pile. Just check you can see, all right? Yeah, yeah, you can. Right. Uh, so what I've got here. Oh, you know what? I haven't even opened this yet. Can't believe I haven't opened it. That's super exciting. Came in the post today. That's, uh, 
So if we can get into it. Ooh. Oh, nicely packaged. Nicely packaged indeed. Here you go, uh, motorcycle parts suppliers. That's how you package something. Right, that's the uh, invoice. I'm not going to tell you how much it costs. Good God. I'll tell you what, there's, oh, when you start adding it up, it's terrifying. Right. Come on. It's another unboxing video. Love these. Right. Look at that. So in here, brand new, brand spanking new clutch basket. Look at that. Oh man. Oh, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Look at that. Super smooth. Super smooth in there. Lovely job. Right, so that along with a load of tiny little ball bearings goes on there like uh, uh, like like that all right and the ball bearings hold it in place oh it's sitting on the, the chain adjuster so that's got to go on there like that then the clutch center goes in there all right uh, and that kind of holds it all together holds it all on this spins independently of this and then the plates go in, that gives you then uh, your, your drive. Now I can't put anything on here because I need to put the duplex chain on before I do anything else. And you do that while well, there's no bearings in it and then you can get it on like that. So that is kind of ready to go, right? So that, that, and that with a new seal, right? Next episode, brilliant. But the centre, can't do anything with that uh, because I want to change the rubbers in it, uh, which are here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I need to open that, put new rubbers in. So next episode, we're going to rebuild this bad boy, new rubbers. Uh, I'll just clean that up just a little bit on the edges because it's a little, little bit, little bit bitten on the edges but the main part is actually still smooth so just a little bit of dressing with the file on that new rubbers in it get all that put together then the plates go in and the duplex chain all that once that's all on uh, then we can put the rotor and the stator on and then that's that side done <laughs> and I've, I, I tell you what so close now i could i could almost I could almost kickstart it and get it going now. It's that close, that close. So thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. And um, yes, yes, we're getting to the exciting stages now. And uh, yeah, brilliant. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.